All right, welcome to the very first example for the stiffness method. Um, kind of a warning, this is going to be a very long example, um, but I thought it was good to start with a somewhat complex problem, um, just so we can understand the different parts and methods of the stiffness uh, method. Um, here we have a, a indeterminate structure. There's two fixed ends at both sides, or there's one fixed end at both sides. Um, three rollers in the middle. The dimensions here are given in blue. Uh, and at the loading, we have a, a two kip per foot a uniformly distributed load acting on the entire span of the beam. And then we have two point loads, both 18 kips, acting in the middle um, of spans A, B, and D, E. Now, the very first thing we do when we start um, a stiffness method example is we actually look at the diagram and we look at each part of the elements. And here we actually have four elements, right? We have, let me draw those. We have element one here, we have element two here, element three, element four. And basically elements are those spans between joints, right? So we have element one, which is A, B, two, B, C, three is C, D, four is D, E. And then we have, and actually elements are usually put in boxes. So I'm gonna put boxes around these elements. And then we also have um, joints, and joints are usually given in circles. So we have joint one here at A, uh, two at B, three at C, uh, four at D, and five at E, okay? Uh, so we have our four elements and we have five joints. Now the very first thing we do is we actually look at this structure, uh, we remove the loading, and we see how many degrees of freedom this structure has. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna redraw this structure here. Ooh, that is a very bad straight line. I'm gonna redraw the structure here, okay? And we have uh, the fixed end here at A, the fixed end here at E, uh, the roller in the middle, the roller to the left, and the roller to the right, okay? And I'll label these A, B, C. Actually, I'm gonna label them um, just to the right of the joints, uh, you'll see why in a little bit, D and E. Okay, and the first thing we do is we label our degrees of freedom. And remember, every degree of freedom is, is either unrestrained or restrained. Um, unrestrained is when that degree of freedom can move. Uh, restrained is when that degree of freedom cannot move, okay? And just for convention, I'm gonna do all unrestrained unrestrained in green and I'm gonna do all restrained in red okay um, and so we look at the structure and remember when we label the degrees of freedom we always go uh, left to right we always go left to right and we always do rotational ones first uh, rotational degrees of freedom first um, then vertical then horizontal, okay? And we always do unrestrained first and restrained second. So if we went left to right on the structure starting with the rotational degrees of freedom, and if we did unrestrained first, uh, we can see here at A, there's a fixed end here, right? So this, deg this rotational degree of freedom um, is a restrained degree of freedom because this fixed end supports a moment, right? However, here at roller B, uh, you know that rollers can only move up and down, so that means they do not support um, a moment. They do not support any type of moment. So that means the first degree of freedom here uh, is the unrestrained rotational one, and I'm gonna call that uh, theta one. And then you have here uh, C, and that also doesn't support a moment, so that means this rotational degree of freedom at support C is unrestrained, so that's theta two. Uh, same thing here at three, or at D, this is theta three, okay? And then here we go to E, there is no, there is a rotational degree of freedom, but it's a restrained degree of freedom because this joint supports a moment, right? Um, so I'm gonna skip past that because right now we're just doing restrained um, for the rotational degrees of freedom, right? 
So now, since we're done with restrained rotational degrees of freedom, we move to restrained rotational degrees of freedom. And we continue our numbering, so we had 1, 2, 3, and we start back on the left side. Here we had a rotational degree of freedom, but it was restrained. So this is going to be in red, and I'm going to call that theta 4. It looks like a 9. I'm not sure why my pen does that. And then uh, we can skip past these restrained, right, because they're already taken care of. We go to E. This is uh, a restrained degree of freedom, right? And so that means we're done with the rotational res unrestrained and restrained, okay? So now we move on to vertical degrees of freedom. We start at the left, and we say, okay, A is a fixed end. It supports a vertical load, or it supports a vertical reaction, right? So that means this, react this degree of freedom is restrained. And right now we're doing unrestrained first, right? We go to B. Um, B also supports a, a vertical uh, degree of freedom, and that's restrained because rollers, um, they support vertical loads, vertical reactions. Um, same thing with all, all the other two rollers, right? And we go to E. Fixed end, it also supports a vertical reaction, so that means the vertical degree of freedom here is also restrained. And we're doing vertical unrestrained first. So we just went through all the vertical reactions, and it looks like they're all um, not unrestrained. That means they're all restrained. So we start back at the left side. Now we look for the restrained vertical reactions, or degrees of freedom, right? A here, it supports a, uh, the fixed end supports a vertical uh, degree of freedom. So I'm going to put down here uh, delta. Uh, let's see, we did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this one, B, has a restrained degree of freedom. Call that 7. This is going to be 8. This is going to be 9. And this is going to be 10. 10. Now, okay, so we're done with vertical uh, degrees of freedom. Now we move on to our horizontal degrees of freedom. Now, since this beam is only subject to vertical loading, meaning up and down, um, this beam really only supports moments and vertical reaction, right? There's no axial forces um, in this member. Now, in real life, there are, probably are some small amount of axial forces, but just for the analysis, um, we, we ignore axial deformations because there are no axial forces, right? So that means we don't even have to worry about the horizontal uh, degrees of freedom. The horizontal degrees of freedom because there are no forces in the x direction to cause any deformations, right? So here we have um, we have our diagram drawn with all the degrees of freedom, unrestrained in green, restrained in red. I'm going to label the elements one more time. You have element 1, 2, 3, 4. And notice that here I have this stiffness matrix um, with the values uh, already plugged in. Uh, I just didn't want to rewrite them all. Um, but notice that at the top and on the right side, uh, these are the numbers, these are, um, I guess, the labels for the degrees of freedom um, for any any um, any of the numbers here within the matrix. Now, notice that we only, um, well, let me, let me do it through an example. Let's look at element 1. Element 1 has 4 degrees of freedom, right? It has theta 4, theta 1, delta 6, delta 7. We look at element 2. Element 2 has 4 degrees of freedom. Theta 1, theta 2, delta 7, delta 8. All these elements have 4 degrees of freedom, right? They have uh, rotational ones, 1 and 2, vertical ones, 3 and 4, and horizontal ones. Well, actually, they don't have horizontal ones, so they only have 1, 2, 3, 4. That means when we look at this matrix, we can actually neglect... Um, rows 5 and 6 and columns 5 and 6. So here's column 5 and 6 since there are we're not considering the 5th and 6th degree of freedom which would be the two horizontal degrees of freedom we can actually get rid of this get rid of this get rid of this and get rid of this right so now all we're looking at 
here's the k matrix, right? ki is equal to these values, these 16 values. So rows 1 through 4 um, and columns 1 through 4. Okay? Now, uh, before I move on to the next part of this example, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at this matrix and say, okay, well, um, in the problem, I forgot to mention this, um, EI is going to be constant. Constant. Okay, that makes the problem a little bit easier. Um, so in this matrix, this K matrix, I'm going to rewrite this K matrix, and I'm going to rewrite it with all the EIs uh, out of this matrix, right? Because EI is, in, EI is a constant, we can pull out that EI. So we end up getting, uh, for the first row, we get 4 over L, we get 2 over L, we get 6 over L squared, and we get negative 6 over L squared. Please, please, please watch these minus signs. Um, they do need to be there. I actually did a few problems and I forgot the minus sign and it was a, it was a very bad day for me. So, you know, don't forget those minus signs. So in the second row, we have 2 over L, we have 4 over L, we have 6 over L squared, uh, we have negative 6 over L squared. On the third row, we have 6 over L squared, we have 6 over L squared, and then we have 12 over L cubed, and then we have negative 12 over L cubed. And finally, the fourth row is negative 6 over L squared, uh, negative 6 over L squared, uh, then we have negative 12 over L cubed, and then finally we have 12, oops, not 12 EI, we already pulled that out. We have 12 over L cubed, okay? So really this EI, right? This matrix becomes this matrix with the EI pulled out because it's constant. And notice that on this main diagonal, remember the main diagonal is this diagonal right here, um, there are no zeros and there are no negative signs. So that means uh, we're doing something right. Um, and notice that this matrix is also symmetrical about the main diagonal, all right? Uh, so in, in this video, we just set up uh, the degree of freedom diagram. Uh, we uh, talked a little bit about the stiffness matrix. And in the next video, we're actually going to start making the stiffness matrix uh, for each one of these four elements. And this is where things start to get a little tedious, but we'll run through um, how to do the entire problem step by step. Um, and then hopefully that'll suit as a pretty good example and teach you guys how to do the stiffness method. All right, so see you in the next video.